Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at boning. We're going to look at the different types of boning that are available to purchase, the pros and cons of each type of boning, how to sew each type of boning onto the garment. Some of these bonings will require casing, so I'm going to show you how to make a casing. Uh, we're also then going to look at how you would apply boning to a garment that has got shoulders, a bodice with shoulders, and also to a strapless bodice. So let's start by looking at some of the different types of boning available. If you go to your haberdashery store, there's lots and lots of different types. So how do you know which one to choose? Well, a lot depends on the sort of garment you're making. If you're going to make something, a bodice with straps on it, you want to bone that for stability, for structure and for support. If you are wearing a garment with shoulders, then the boning will be going in just to really support the style. And it's quite often used on vintage styles. If you look behind me, the black and white dress is a Vogue vintage pattern, and that has got a boned bodice. I chose to put boning into it to make the bodice tighter and more um, structured to hold the weight of the skirt. The skirt on that dress is very, very heavy. But if you look at the other garment behind me, the blue evening dress, which is a discontinued Vogue pattern, unfortunately. It's a lovely dress, but because the shoulders sit slightly off your shoulder, it needs a boned bodice for a strapless application because otherwise, if we don't bone the bodice, that dress is liable to fall down and that wouldn't be a very good look. So let's have a look at which bonings I choose to use and how I would apply them to a fabric. The most common one used on the market is this. It's known as Rigoline and it's polyester and it's rods of polyester that have been woven together. Now the downside of Rigoline is that in wear these little rods poke their way out at the ends and they will go not only through your garment and through your lining, they'll also go into you and that can be really uncomfortable. So you need to think very carefully where you're going to use this one. It's not a good idea to apply Rigoline below the waist. As you can see, it's very twisty because it comes on a roll and it does flatten out, but because it's polyester, it will also tend to bend to the shape of your body. So if you go down below your waist with it, what tends to happen? If you sit down for a long time, the Rigoline will get nice and warm and it will start to bend the other way. So when you stand up, you might get a little bump in your clothes that doesn't look so good. Now, the ends of Rigoline, we can fix them. So if you've got Rigoline and these little ends are poking out, what you need to do is after you've cut it to your required length is to heat seal the ends. It is a polyester, it will melt. So we can do this, you can run it through um, a flame on a candle, a bit dangerous, but it does work. Or if you get um, an electric element, perhaps on a cooker, or an electric, um, and get, or get a, um, a pan really, really hot, and just place it on the bottom, it will melt it and seal it. If it goes a bit blobby, just take a file to it, an emery board, and file it down. So that's Rigoline, and I'll show you in a moment how we would apply that to a piece of fabric. Rigoline comes in two widths as well. This is a 12 mil, which is about half inch. It all so comes in a narrower one, about 3 eighths of an inch. You can get a covered version of Rigoline, and this is very similar. It's the same product. It's usually the narrower version, and all they've done is stick a decorative ribbon on top of it. Um, it makes it much easier to apply and to sew on, um, but we still have the same problems. You would still need to heat seal the ends. And it's covered with a decorative ribbon so that it could be applied on the outside of a garment to look like boning on a fitted bodice top. The covering on it usually comes in black or white or cream. And then we come on to a, one of my favourite bonings. This is nylon. This is a nylon boning. It's used commercially an awful lot in ready to wear and it's also used a lot in underwear. So you might have seen a boning like this in some of your lingerie garments. It's very durable, it's very strong, it doesn't go out of shape but you can't sew through it. So this sort of boning is going to require a casing to be um, applied to your fabric first for it to slot into. 
And when you cut the ends of this, it's very sharp. So sometimes what we have to do is take an, an emery file or a nail file and just file off the corners to make it nice and smooth. That's nylon boning. And that can be used in strapless garments or garments with straps. That's narrower rigoline. And then we have some lovely boning here. This is metal boning. Um, these come in pre-cut lengths. We have white bones which bend backwards and forwards. These are made of a mild steel. And we have what are known as spirals. And this is like a squashed spring. And it's got end caps on and it bends backwards and forwards and sideways. These are fantastic, but these are associated with corsetry usually. So if you are making a garment like this, which is a proper corset, then this would have metal boning in. And it has metal boning in for a reason. This garment is meant to fit you really, really tightly and to pull in your body and to take some inches off your waist. If it didn't have metal boning, all the previous bonings I've shown you would distort and go out of shape. So here, on the outside of the garment, we have casings, which I'm going to show you how to make in a moment. And into each one of those casings is inserted a, a metal bone. Very hard wearing, very strong. You could also put metal boning into bridal wear, or if you're making special occasion wear and you've got a big wedding dress, a very heavy wedding dress, you might want metal boning in that because the metal boning will also help take the weight of the skirt. So let's just show you how we can apply some of these. So now I'm going to show you how to make a casing. I've chosen calico to make my casings out of and calico is really, really good and you'll see why later on. To make a casing, you need a straight grain strip of fabric. And we're cutting it straight grain so it doesn't stretch. If I cut it on the bias grain, it would give and it might distort. So I've cut a straight grain strip of fabric two and a half centimetres or one inch wide. And what I'm now going to do is take my tape maker. This is a half inch or a 12 mil tape maker. And if you never use one of these gadgets, they are amazing. Best little piece of equipment you'll ever buy. Feed it through. If it doesn't come out at the other end easily, you just get a pin and push. And as it comes out the other end, can you see that it's folded? So I'm just going to get my iron. There's a little handle on the tape maker to stop you burning your fingers because it's metal, it will get really hot. And all you do is move your tape maker, make sure the fabric's feeding through evenly and chase it with the iron. A bit of steam will help. These really are one of the best little gadgets and you can get them in different widths. This width, a half inch or 12 mil, is really, really useful but you can also get narrower ones, quarter inch wide and you can get much wider ones, 18 mil wide, which is about three quarters of an inch. So now I have my casing made and that's going to be really strong and durable. So now I'll go to my sewing machine and show you how to apply each of these casings. I'm just going to apply them onto a piece of calico for now. Shortly I will show you how you're going to measure the correct length for each casing, but the most important thing for now is how to apply each one. And as I've just made a casing, let's start with that one. So, pop it onto the calico. I've got a straight grain casing and I'm going to try and put it onto the straight grain of my fabric. It's always a good idea to apply boning on the straight of the grain because that will keep the fabric in perfect shape. If it's slightly on a bias grain, you're always in danger of something distorting. You can see the grain of your fabric quite clearly if you look and try and get it as straight as you can. So let's just pop a couple of pins in. And then we're going to pop it under the sewing machine and sew it. Now this is where you have to sew very close to the edge because your boning won't fit otherwise. 
I've got a stitch length of about 2.4 for this. And it's a question sometimes of just getting your eye in to stitch close to the edge without falling off. So you might need one or two goes at this. And I'm just going to leave it there and go down the other side to show you. Something like this, it's all right to reverse at both ends to lock off your threads. There's no need to pull them through to the other side. Reversing is quite acceptable if you wish to do that. And I've got a nice bright pink thread here so you can see clearly what I'm doing. It's a really good test to sew a straight line close to the edge, this is. So there I've got my casing on. Now into this casing, I could either put a metal bone, and you can see that slots up really nicely. Because this is a 12 mil wide casing, and the bones are seven mil. So the casing is about half an inch and your bones are about three eighths. And that slides in really nicely. If I wasn't using metal boning and I was using the nylon boning, you'll find this also fits into this casing. I'm just going to cut a little bit off. When you cut through this, be really careful because it's really tough to cut. And this will also fit nicely into a casing. Look at that. And you can see already what it's done to that piece of fabric. Yes, it is very twisty at the moment, but if I just put the iron on this and flatten it and uh, leave it to cool, it will go quite flat. So what else did we look at? We looked at the covered rigoline. So this is a covered rigoline. It's got the ribbon on it. Let's just pop a bit off there. It doesn't do your scissors any good cutting boning, I can tell you. Use an old pair. And this is, again, easy to sew on. And again, you're going to have to sew close to the edge. And this could be very pretty on the outside of a prom dress. And it could give a corset effect, but without being a corset. So again, this is sewing close to the edge. and down the other side as well. So that one's really easy to sew on. Now, if you're using covered rigoline, it might not be going on the straight of grain because you might be putting your covered rigoline over a seam. And that's okay, because the, co the covered rigoline is usually the narrower boning underneath, it will fit quite happily over seams. So if you've got a prom dress or a special occasion dress or a little nice bodice and you want to emphasise perhaps your bust seams and your side seams, covered rigoline is a good option. And there we have the covered rigoline on. So that also will need flattening with the iron. I think you can see that it's not quite as stiff as the nylon, just by the way that it's behaving. If I took that out, you can see this isn't anything like as structured or as stiff. So if you want it really rigid and you really want your bodies to stay up, nylon boning might be the better bet. And then we come on to the normal rigoline. This also comes in black or white. And again, you cut it to the required length. It's really tough to cut, so not good for your scissors. And you can machine this straight on. I've seen people make casings for this, but really there is no need. You can machine this on. You can't pin through it though. That's the downside. And again, it's sewing close to the edge. 
and it'll make your machine go clunk, clunk, clunk. And the great thing about this one is that you can, when you get to the right length, if you pop your needle in your work, lift your foot, you can stitch across the bottom. and up the other side. And you can see where I've wobbled off the edge there because if your needle gets stuck on one of the little ridges, one of these little sticks of polyester, it will throw it offline. But nobody's going to see it. It's going to be inside. So we'll keep that a secret. and you can just finish that off again across the top. So you can see on that one where I've actually wobbled off the very edge of the fabric because the needles picked up one of the cords, one of the rods of polyester and it pushes the needle away and then uh, there's nothing you can do about that. So that's how to sew a casing on for your nylon or your metal, covered rigoline for a decorative effect, and normal rigoline. So what I'm going to do now is show you how I put both all of those into a garment and where you'd place them and how you mark out your placement lines. What I'd like to do now is to show you how you could create a boned bodice in a garment with shoulders. This little dress bodice front and back we've used in previous lessons. So it's in a wool, it's mounted onto the silk, and if you remember, we slashed the darts and herringbone them down. So that on its own is lovely, it would fit beautifully, but I wanted to have a little bit more structure in it. I wanted it to feel a little bit tighter when it was worn. So if we push that back, you'll see underneath I've got another bodice. This time I've used calico. I said to you a long time ago in a previous lesson that calico was a very good underlining or interlining and this is where calico really comes into its own. So if we just flip this bodice over, you can see here this extra layer. I can't put the boning onto the wool bodice because it would show. So we've got the calico bodice here. It's made up exactly the same. We've got the darts. We've got the darts slashed, but this time I haven't herringbone them down. I've zigzagged them down much quicker. But you'll see I've got lots of more stitching on the calico. I've stitched the stitching lines. So I've got the seam allowance, and then I've stitched where the stitching line will be. This is so I know where to place my boning. And I've got two pieces of boning on the front. And you're going to think, well, they're in a very strange place. Well, they're not really, because if you remember what I said to you previously, we need to try and keep the boning on the straight of the grain. This great big dart has really affected the shape of the front. I have boned to, alongside the dart, but on the straight of the grain of the fabric, not following the line of the dart. And what this will do is keep the fabric straight here on the bodice and not sort of push it towards the bust point. We want it kept straight. On the back section, the boning is much, much longer. On the front, obviously, we can't go up over the bust. But on the back, we've got the boning going right up in towards the shoulder blade area. So this is going to keep the back of the garment really nice and straight. And you will really appreciate it when you sit down because um, you'll feel really supported and comfortable. And again, we've got the stitching lines marked. And again, it's following the straight of the grain. So I'm just going to show you now how I put this onto the other bodice back and then how we would attach it all together. So I'll just pop that to one side for a moment. So there's my other bodice back. And there's my dress bodice back. So duplicate copy, same dart, but this time all the seams are stitched in and here's my piece of boning. So I'm using the Rigoline. I've heat sealed the ends so they're really solid. It's not going to move 
and I'm going to place this alongside the dart on the straight of the grain. Now if I measure my piece of boning, I've cut off mm, 28 centimetres which is 11 inches of boning and it's just going to fit about there. I need now to mark the finishing point. I can't pin this in. It's, you'd never get a pin through this, it's way too tough. So at the bottom I've got a seam allowance. I need to make sure that when the seam allowance is finished the boning isn't sitting right on it because otherwise when you put the skirt onto this bodice the danger is you'll be sewing through the boning and then you'll have a seam that is going to be really really uncomfortable to wear. So I'm starting a little way up so I can mark that with a bit of pencil just looking at my grain and sliding it into place and I want it to finish about there going up towards the shoulder area so if I line that up and this is where you have to do two jobs at once hold it line it up and sew it perhaps that's three jobs I'm going to sew it with nice bright pink so you can see it I'm just keeping it in check at the bottom to make sure that we're going in the right direction. I can see my grain on the calico quite clearly. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Needle it into my work and turn and stitch across. And you might find sometimes it gets a little bit stuck. And then up the other side. And you can sort of push it as you go up the second side. Let's take rid of that thread. when we get to the top, again we can turn and stitch across the top. You, yeah, it doesn't always want to go. And we can do a couple of reverse stitches. And take it out from the machine. And we get rid of all these threads now. So there's my boning in place. And that's really strong and secure. What I need to do now is place it on top of this. So there's my other bodice back, nice and flat. Pop this to it, match up the dart, and pop a pin in, and then match it up down the centre back. And just keep it stretched out. You'll find this has got a bit of a mind of its own. If it's really curly, this piece isn't too bad, you could press it. And if necessary, just leave something heavy on top of it while it cools down. Your seam roll's good for that because your seam roll's quite heavy and it's usually about the right length. So if you get it nice and steamy, pop the seam roll on it for a few moments and it'll soon flatten. Pop a couple of pins in there. So what I can do now, you can see already that fabric is no longer soft and floppy. I go back to my bodice, I've got my bodice front because I need to attach all the layers together at the side seam. It's not having a wool bodice and then a calico bodice separately. We need to secure them together at the side seams so that they really become one unit and work very well together. So on the bodice front, if I just pop a couple of pins in here, matching the dart, And again at the waist. And then it's time to put together. So I've got two layers of wool and two layers of calico that I'm going to sew through now. So this bodice is going to be really strong. So I can use the same pin. Just make sure that you've if you've got pins on the other side, they're not going to 
be in the way under the sewing machine. There's nothing worse than getting a pin stuck down your dog feeds. And it's all lining up beautifully. Just need to get rid of that pin on the other side. Whoops. Just bring my edges together. So I've got the calico, the silk organza, and the wool all in this seam. So this is quite a big seam. But this is really going to make it strong. And then pop it back under the machine. And this time I've got a nice guide to follow. And I'm going to stitch over my pins. Maybe not that one, it's not very straight. Snip off my ends. I haven't knotted them off this time on the side seam because there's going to be another seam going around the armhole and another seam around the waist. So they're not going to come undone because they're going to have another row of stitching over it. So what we've now got is a complete bone bodice. That seam would now need pressing open and I've got a really structured bodice. You can see that it's really got a little life of its own now. And doesn't that look fabulous? What I'm now going to do is show you how you apply your boning on a strapless garment, because it's slightly different. I'm now going to show you how to apply a boning layer to a strapless bodice. This is a strapless bodice. It's done out of silk dupion or silk dupione, and it's been underlined this time for a bit of strength with a craft cotton. Now, if you're making a strapless bodice, it's obviously got to stay up, it's got to stay supported. So instead of putting something like organza under my silk, I put the craft cotton for a bit of extra support. And then, of course, we've got the calico layer. So you can see that this bodice really has got some structure and life of its own. So let's have a look at the other side of it. So here we have the calico layer, very similar to the bodice with shoulders, but this has been marked out slightly differently. We've got the stitching lines marked that we had previously, and here I've also got the waist seam marked. So I'd have established where this was at the fit stage when we did our uh, muslin fitting or toile fitting, and I've marked that for a reason. I'm going to show you how to bone this with the nylon boning using a casing. But if I had decided to use Rigeline in this, as I did in the previous one, I would actually be stopping my boning at the waist. Rigeline doesn't really work well below the waist, so it's a good idea just to mark the waist seam on it. You might think, well, why have I got a line at the back? This is actually the centre back line. Because this is a bodice and it's strapless and it's a standalone garment, this at the back would probably have buttons and loops. So you'd have quite a big crossover in order to do it up. So that is the centre back line. So if I just pop that to one side for now, I can get the missing back section and show you how we're going to work it. So I've got my uh, silk and my craft cotton and I've got my calico layer all nicely marked up. Very faint pencil line here, I don't know if you can see it, showing me where my straight of grain is. And also, I've managed to match it up to the other back. And I've got my casing already made. So I'm just going to pop that over my line, pop a couple of pins in it, pull it nice and taut. This needs to be nice and straight and it's overhanging top and bottom. We can deal with that later. So now I'm going to machine this on. Again, I'm using nice bright pink so you can see what I'm doing. And sewing close to the edge. So the casing is going to go the length of the bodice. So it's not like the um, Rigeline where we had to establish the length of it first. So 
So I'm going to go all the way down. To the bottom of the garment. And take it out. And snip it off. And then I'm going to go down the other side. When you put these casings on, it's always a good idea to sew both sides in the same direction. Always top, both sides top to bottom or both sides bottom to top. Doesn't matter which, but if both um, rows of stitching are going in the same direction, it does help. So down my other side. Snip it off. Now, my boning at the top, I don't want it to go right up to the top stitching line. So I'm going to put a stop across on the machine. So this needs to be about 3 eighths of an inch, 6 mil down from the top edge. And all I'm going to do is literally sew across the casing and then reverse and go back again. And that's made a really nice stop because I don't want this layer of boning getting in the way of the seam allowance at the top. So just snip off all these threads. It's the only trouble with sewing, you get threads everywhere. And what I can now do is remove the top of the casing as well. And because I didn't finish the ends, it will pull back quite easily and I can snip that off. So now it's time to measure my boning. So here's my piece of nylon. So it needs to come to there. And it needs to finish about the same distance at the bottom edge. But I don't want it too tight. If it's too tight in this casing, it could push and distort. And we have to allow the boning to be able to move slightly. Whether this is a nylon bone or a metal bone, you really do now need to allow a little bit of room for movement. Because as your body moves, this inside its channel will also move. So that's the maximum length I could do it. So I'm going to cut it just a fraction shorter. And then I'll get my file. And I'm just going to take the sharp edges off it. We don't want those poking through the fabric. And this only takes a second. So what I can now do is take this and push it all the way up. And this is when you discover you haven't sewn close enough to the edge. Once it goes into the casing, it's quite difficult sometimes to find the ends. So just fold it up the bottom and push. And there it's going right up to the stop at the top. And just run your fingers down it and smear that any wrinkles. So there's the bottom of my bone and there's my stitching line. So now I can put a stop across the bottom, the same way as I did the stop at the top. And we've got room in that casing now for this nylon bone to move up and down of its own accord during wear. Just make sure you don't sew through it, otherwise your needle will go pop. Sew across and reverse. And snip off the threads. Of course, you'd do this in a cream, not a pink. So it's nice to keep the inside of your garment as neat as the outside. And I can get rid of the rest of this channel now because it's served its purpose. So just pull your threads back and I can snip that off. Right, so we're going to match this up to its silk layer, the same as we did on the, on the um, bodice with the shoulders. So match your seams. So I've got the nice smooth side of the calico against the silk because we don't really want this boning to be showing through. So match it at the seams. Match it at, this is going to be the side seam because my notches are there. Just flatten it out. a few pins in 
And that's right at the top. That's going to be nice and strong. And then we'll just match across towards the centre back. That fits perfectly. And now I can take this and join it to the rest of the bodice, silk side to silk side. And make sure that's all tacked down and we can join this. Just pop a pin at the bottom. I'm being really naughty here, I haven't pinned these together. But if you get used to your sewing, you know, sometimes you can sew without your pins in. my final seam on my bodice. So that just needs pressing open and what I've got now is a bodice that will more or less stand upon its own. So that's great, that means that when you're wearing it, it can't go anywhere, it can't fall down, it's going to be totally supportive. The boning on this is to support the shape of the bodice. So this is great on a prom dress, a special occasion dress, um, a wedding dress, and this bodice, you can see it's almost standing up of its own accord. This, however, is not designed to hold your body up inside it, it's designed to su um, support the style of the garment you will still need to wear a, stra a strapless bra under this. That's what I would recommend. Um, but isn't that great? Nice, easy technique for a stunning bodice. Finishing touch to this, I would probably line it with cotton. Because this is going to be quite a tight fitting garment, if you line it with cotton, if you get warm, then the cotton will sounds horrible I know, absorb any moisture from your body and be so much more comfortable to wear because all of these layers are natural fibres so all of these layers will now breathe with your body. So there we are, boned bodices. I would love to answer your questions and see your pictures on the Craftsy platform of all the couture techniques that you have learnt during my lessons. The next lesson I'm going to show you how to make the perfect set in sleeve. I'll see you there.